asked, but uh, we have some time for Q&A, so we'll address some questions here. Um, let's see. So um, this from Mark. We have, from a time management perspective, what's the best way to incorporate studying for the NCLEX into the final semester? How far out from the planned test dates should we start and how much time dedicated each day should we be, should be spent towards NCLEX review? Um, so as I said before, the earlier you can start, the better. Um, start now if you can, uh, but if you're close to graduating, um, the four weeks to NCLEX workbook, I think is really efficient. Uh, it really breaks things down, I think, uh, and builds upon itself over the over the four weeks. Um, I know for me, my strategy was I wanted to be able be able to take the NCLEX like as soon as possible. As soon as I got my auth authorization to test, I wanted to schedule it and just knock it out. I didn't want to because I believe I don't know if there's actually any studies, but this is what my instructors told me: the longer you wait to take the NCLEX, the higher chance you have of failing. So, um, so start studying now, do quiz questions every day and then slowly increase them. And then the closer you get, you can start decreasing the questions. I, I think I still did up to hundred a day right before um, I did it. So I think it really depends on how well you are at retaining information, how much uh, ground you feel like you have to make up. Um, so, it's really kind of where you are now and where you want to be by the time you you take the NCLEX. I hope that helps answer the question. It's it's kind of tricky because it's very personalized, very individual. Um, let's see. How did I implement my Picmonic quiz study along with ATI workload we have to complete for nursing school? Uh, also, did you feel Picmonic helped you in order to level for your ATI proctored exams? And this was from um, Michelangelo. So Mike, um, like I said, I did the Picmonic quiz questions every single day. And then for ATI, uh, I would do the practice exams. Uh, they were required for us. So with the practice exams, I would, uh, on the areas that I needed to work on, I would look in the ATI book for their explanation. And then I would try to find the Picmonic videos that uh, covered that particular topic as well. Just because again, I'm a video or I'm like an uh, uh, auditory visual person. So that stuff really helped to stick out in my mind. Uh, one of the other things that uh, I didn't mention was with the playlists, if you download the app for your phone, is I would. Uh, I would play my Picmonic playlist in the car while I was driving. Now these are videos that I've already watched. So they're really just kind of refreshers. And then I would just try to visualize them while I was driving and listening to it. And I felt like that helped me retain it. Um, but Picmonic definitely helped me level on my ATIs. I leveled on every single one the first uh, attempt. Um, the only one that I didn't use Picmonic for, or the, the only two were fundamentals and pharmacology. And that was because I found Picmonic after I took those. I took those very on very, very early on in my program. Um, what sources did you use to get your daily NCLEX questions? Um, so Picmonic, I did the, that was like, that was, seriously, this was the only study guide I used for the NCLEX. Um, I didn't use any other study guide. I didn't use Hearst reviews. I didn't use the Saunders book. I didn't use any of that. Um, I only used Picmonic. Early on in school, I also used, um, it's now called nursing.com, but uh, I didn't really use the, the questions from that, just kind of the videos in there. But when it came to questions, I, I really only used Picmonic. And then we had to do ATI. So um, I guess you can say I used ATI, but it was a requirement. So it wasn't voluntary. Um, tips for new grads studying using Picmonics in preparation for NCLEX, in addition to the Picmonic and four weeks book, time to prepare for NCLEX. Again, the time is going to be very um, individualized. You know, I don't know if you'll ever feel ready to take it. I, 
I felt ready, but even when I finished my NCLEX, I was like, I don't know if I passed. It was 50 50. Um, so it, it, it kind of depends on you and where you are or where you feel you are in your studying. Um, I think ATI was really helpful in that perspective. If your program uses ATI, that's awesome because it kind of uh, it gives you an idea of uh, the, the questions are very similar to the NCLEX. And I feel like they also identify your weak areas where you need to study. So if you're that far along in the program where you're kind of wrapping everything up, if you can find kind of an NCLEX simulation or you know that final ATI exam, the comprehensive exam, um, that'll kind of identify where your weak areas are and where you should focus your studying. Um, that'll be the most efficient way to do it because it will, um, you know, spending time studying stuff you're already strong at is not going to help you. You need to cover those weak areas. What is suggested for those who are preparing for classes? So, Crystal, like like you're going to be a new nursing student. Um, so the main, the main things are, you know, understanding, understanding your, how you learn and your study habits. Um, make sure that you stay organized and make sure that you're studying every single day. Um, take one day a week to kind of refresh, reboot, but, you know, kind of everything I already talked about. Um, and go in with a positive attitude and be eager to learn. Learn something new every single day. Uh, and I still do this at work. And I think some of uh, the night shift, night shift nurses aren't very appreciative of it. But um, when I show up, I am excited and I'm positive and I'm passionate about, passionate about what I'm doing. Um, but every day is an opportunity to learn. Every day, there's a new challenge. And so if you show up eager and ready to learn, especially at clinicals, I think that'll make a huge difference in your learning experience. Um, did you buy a book, online subscriptions, apps? So um, I used the, I obviously subscribed to Picmonic. Um, I didn't buy the book, the Picmonic book. At the time, it was only available as a PDF. So I downloaded it and had it printed at a local print shop. So there was that book that I used. Um, no other NCLEX books. We had, we were given our ATI books as just part of our program that was part of our tuition. So I had that, but I did, again, I didn't really use it. Um, but that was, that was what I used. Apps, uh, the Picmonic app. Um, I used the nursing.com just because of the video lectures. Some of them were pretty helpful. Uh, and then for clinicals, I used Hippocrates for some med information. Uh, that was pretty much it from there. So hope that answered your question, Amy. Oh, Amy Kruger. There's multiple Amy's in here. Having a hard time with clinical paperwork and studying for exams. I completely understand. So um, for those that aren't in school yet, during clinical, you have to, or after anywhere, we had to do care plans, which takes a long time, but is very beneficial in helping you understand um, how to intervene when your patient has problems, uh, which in this case would be called nursing diagnoses. Uh, studying for exams. So what I would do is I would I would take the concept guides or the study guides that our instructors would give us, and I would build the Picmonic playlists off of that. Um, and then obviously the daily quiz questions. Uh, I would read, or I, so I had eBooks when I was in school. I didn't have actual paper books, and the reason I liked the eBooks was because I could search for specific phrases or specific conditions. And so that I felt like really helped me um, with studying because I could, I could hit the key points that I needed to hit um, in my study guide, as opposed to just trying to read the entire chapter. Um, like for pathophysiology, that was literally insane. It was literally impossible. You couldn't read all of the material in the one week time that you needed. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm recently graduated and I'm tutoring the nursing students. What tips should I use in helping them use Papermonix in my tutoring? Um, that's a good question. So what I usually recommend to people is uh, watch just a few videos a day. You don't have to get through like 20 videos in one sitting. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of material. So um, maybe five to 10 videos, depending on how long they are. Um, I would just watch the education portion, but you can do the education and story if you want. And then do the quiz questions. And I forgot to mention this. So whenever I would do my quiz questions, I would read the rationale um, every single time. So sometimes whenever you answer the question, it doesn't, like the rationale doesn't pop up. So you know what the correct answer is, but you don't know, necessarily know why. And the why is very important, um, or you, it doesn't tell you the patho behind it or the mechanism of action. So it's very important that you read the rationales. So I would read the rationales every single time. So that way I understood why the, why the right answer was the right answer, right? So same thing when I would watch the videos. So I would watch the videos and I would kind of pause it for a second, click on it, read um, the rationale. Uh, I didn't realize that at first. I discovered that later on. And when I started incorporating that in, um, it made a huge difference. And it's, you know, you can recall things, not just for exams, but in clinical settings, you know, when you're dealing with a certain situation, you can recall, you know, your pathophysiology or, you know, your medication or whatever the case may be. Um, let's see. So that might help them. Um, Alisa, uh, having them read the rationales whenever they're doing uh, their picmonics, not just listening to it. Um, Amy Adams, we have 10 chapters to read. How do you comprehend and retain the information? Uh, that, that's a lot. That's a lot of reading. Like I said, for patho, we would have crazy reading like that. Um, so what I would usually do is I would, I would try to take the key subjects for each chapter and either use Picmonic or use nursing.com and watch the lectures and watch the videos from that. Um, that really saved a lot of time. And, and then doing the daily quiz questions with the space repetition, that just helps you retain it. So farm for NCLEX. Um, I don't think I had that many questions on, pharm on pharmacology, pharmacology on the NCLEX. Uh, really, it's just, it's understanding the mechanism of action and uh, what is the goal? What is it you're trying to accomplish with your medication? And then any major side effects, uh, especially like, or adverse effects, I should say, any adverse effects to watch out for. Are the Picmonic quiz questions similar to NCLEX, NCLEX style questions? No, I wouldn't say that they're similar to NCLEX, uh, but it just helps you retain the information. And, and like I said, if you read the rationales, it will become uh, more clear. It'll help you with your understanding. And then that's gonna lead to better critical thinking for the NCLEX, if you can work through that rationale. What do you recommend for someone who wants to go um, into NICU, have a better chance of getting in, and job interview or interview jobs since I know it's pretty competitive. So uh, I did a non-traditional kind of route. What I did was I joined an organiza organization, um, A1, it's called A1, the Association for Women's Health Obstetric and Neonatal Nurses. And I attended their meetings. Again, this was pre-pandemic, so maybe a little bit different now. They do have virtual meetings, but um, there's also NAN, the National, National Association of Neonatal Nurses. In my area, they weren't an active chapter, so I went with AWAN. Um, and I would show up to the meetings. I'd be the only student nurse there most of the time, and I would try to speak with the nurses. And two of the chapter leaders for um, the Central Florida chapter knew that I wanted to be a NICU. I let them know that I wanted to be a NICU. And they reached out to the NICU nurse manager and she said uh, to email her to set up an interview and to email her my resume. So um, networking, networking is key, I believe, to landing a position, not just in the NICU, but any kind of 
competitive area or just any job in general. If you network, um, you let people know you're excited or you're passionate or you're enthusiastic about getting in that particular specialty, that'll be really important. So a lot of people also suggested trying to get like a CNA job or a patient tech job in that particular department. Um, that can definitely help. Uh, if you're towards the end of school, if you have a preceptorship, my program didn't offer a preceptorship. So if you have a preceptorship and you can get into the NICU or whatever department you want to get into, that can also help. That can often lead to a job as well. 